Nation Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week in the podcast, as always with my very, very good friends, Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Good, thank you. Yeah, good, thanks, Lee. Glad to hear it. Thanks, everyone out there for listening. Don't forget to follow us on social media at listen to I N listen to O I N. I've been a push on a push to over three thousand followers, which we got to this week. I'm very pleased about. We're now on the march to four thousand. Catching up with Joe's ambition for ten thousand on TikTok. We are live on there as well right now at this moment. Tuesday, half five, six o'clock. That's what time. Joe will signpost it. J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. Yes. I believe, and I heard, I heard the shade you were throwing towards the baton of conversation last week. But the bat's on his back. <laughs> he's listen. He's listen. What do you mean? Actually, listen to listen to the episode. Oh my lord! <laughs> I was missing you guys so much. I just needed to hear the sound of your voices. So I ably hand the baton to Jose this week. What are we talking about for this week's inspiration? Uh, so uh, Bino's just given a well done chaps mega job. So just just to give a shout out there to Bino. Thank Fonte. you very much. Yeah, just um, so yeah, last night I went live on TikTok and so and I did ask what would they want me to talk about? What they want us to talk about? This is thanks to Noah. I don't think he's on tonight. Or well, they're on tonight. But Noah, I can't remember the actual full tag. Uh, and Noah said we should talk about parenting. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to talk, talk about parenting. So I think it's quite a good good thing because you've got lee you're a parent i'm a parent and ryan you, well i don't know i'm not for you. I, i'm not a parent <laughs> it's for you to reveal but you, you, you know your parents right so you can do that perspective so um so it's about maybe like um you know effective parenting but actually last night and I, I, I don't know the context the context obviously they were suffering obviously they they were having difficulties with their parents and i was going to say in that reference because they did I mentioned they were having difficulties so i just thought we could talk about it um and maybe talk about experiences what works what doesn't work um so i'm going to throw it over to you guys there you go i'm just there you go lee that parenting. is the broadest topic opening i've ever heard yeah. in the last 178 episodes jose that's always the first one right <laughs> so i suppose the question would be what's it like to be a parent and what's it like i suppose i suppose now being a well, parent i'm going to leave the zoom call now no, I've, no, no, I've right, no because business. I'm going to ask no the other question for you. What's it like to be, you know, in your position right now, you know? And you can yeah. talk, Ryan, you can talk about your relationship with your parents or you can talk about your relationship with your surrogate dad, who is me. It's your choice entirely. There you Lee, go, look at Lee that. Is my, Lee is my dad. <laughs> ah, so oh, I'll start off, Joe, and I'll say, it, and it's, it's an if you know, you know thing, but it's the greatest thing there is. And you can't describe why it is, but it absolutely is at the highest level as a starting statement. Um, it's also hard work that you probably get wrong 95% of the time, even though you're trying to do it right. For my broad answers to your broad question. Um, I always talk with people about, um, especially people who are going to have their first kids and stuff. And everyone says it's amazing and encourages and whatever else. And I'm very keen to let them know that the first six months is like hell on earth and your head's a blur and you don't know whether you're coming or going and it's an absolute nightmare. But once you get through it, things start to settle down and it gets better isn't the right word. Karma, I think. Karma bit by bit. And as your kids grow up, they become more independent at every single stage. You know, they go from being 100% dependent they can then start crawling, they can then start walking, they can start feeding themselves, they can start asking for things. All that dependency goes away, which takes off that, um, not the responsibility, but you know that draw on your time and your energy. But at the same point, they can answer back and they can drop things and they can walk into things. And if everything's, it opens up all these new risks, it opens up all these new experiences, and then you start to romanticise the stage that come before and pine for what, what it used to be as well. And it's just, it's all very weird and contradictory at the same time, which I know all of that sounds like I've just read it off some corny greeting card somewhere, but that's my experience. And I, for those who don't know, I twins. Um, so two at once, first I'd had double trouble, which again, pros and cons. People always talk about the fact that it, like, it must have been really hard. 
I don't know any different. I don't know what it would have been like one. So I can't really say it's a genuine point of reference. But for everything that was doubled up, you know, crying, nappies needing, changing, feeding being done, they also entertained each other and played with each other. And these other things that I think probably you wouldn't get if you didn't have two at the same time. So it's, I think every experience is very, very unique. And it's a lot of hard work, but it is rewarding. But also, once again, it's a hell of a lot of hard work. Yeah, I've got a question here. Uh, do you believe in physical punishment? As a parent, um, I mean, that, this, oh, is, that, this is the, 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 this, this the smacking reference, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, I personally, I don't. I'm not going to say that I never have like done a tap on the arm or something with them type of thing, but I'm not a... And, and I know because having conversations with family members, same age as me, a bit older, who grew up in different generations. And one, one person said they used to have to pick the belt as in the belt they were going to get hit with. And that, you know, personally, that's not that wouldn't be my approach. So I'd say I'm on the no side, but I say I've probably done a tap on the arm or something at some point to kind of deal with yeah. certain situations. Not like I can remember specifically, but I'm not a not a beating as punishment type of person yeah same same as you i think it's always trying you know trying to instill those lessons without that um you know and it's stressful as a parent isn't it it's stressful as a parent it's not an easy thing so um ryan what about you so th you know on that on that on that theme or, or anything anything you've talked about actually what, what what are your views you know from you know not being a parent yet uh but you know from being because because when you become a parent, you sort of tend to like almost like not forget you've become you know you you it, you you become a little bit different, but you're still in that in that <laughs> zone, I think, without having you do. That and not it is there's a point of realization where you've become one. <laughs> it's weird. You, you don't really do you? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's the weirdest thing. But yeah, over to you, Ryan. From your perspective, how do you see this? I still feel like this is the broadest subject ever. I don't even know where to start. Well, whatever you, you know, um, punishment. Of course, you've got punishment, you know. So you I'm, know. I'm a monkey on Twi uh, TikTok, by the way. We are talking about parenting this week. Shout out, just joined, checking what we're talking about. And we're making Ryan squirm because he doesn't feel like he has anything to add, but I'm sure he does. Oh, yeah, definitely, I think. Um, I can't imagine. I don't have kids, so I don't know how I would, how I would discipline them or punish them. But I would like to think that it wouldn't be physical. Um. I'd like to mentally break them down instead. No, that's probably not the answer. <laughs> it either. sounds like you, know, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 don't, I honestly, I don't really know. I, I, I would, as I say, I don't think it would be. It's not in my nature to to be like that. So, and it wasn't in, um, certainly my dad's nature to be like that. Similarly to you, I think Lee, when when I was growing up, um, I can only remember one time where um probably kicking off about something can remember my dad raising his hand and he's never hit me or anything like that he raised his hand in a, to i think it was going to be on my arm and, I, and it worked because i didn't i didn't say anything or i didn't you know i stopped and that was it mum i better remember to use that with you in future then. yeah yeah i i try not to misbehave too much but you know how it is <laughs> um mum was always i think what's the word less patient is that the right word i think her her tolerance because i live with my mum i didn't live with my dad i think her her tolerance to my to my crap um was much shorter <laughs> shenanigans right yeah shenanigans uh, i love that word <laughs> shenanigans <laughs> her tolerance to it was much shorter than my dad's so obviously it isn't an excuse i you know i wouldn't condone that you know that kind of thing and i'm sure she doesn't now either but you know at the time what you're you saying managed... is you deserved it yeah, you manage the situation as best as put in front of you, right? Yeah. Um, in the same way, you wouldn't walk down the street and punch someone in the face, but if they try to accost you and 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 mug you or something similar, then you do what you would to defend yourself. I'm not saying that my mum was defending herself from me, but you know what I mean. You different different actions cause different reactions. Um. So yeah, um, my relationship with my parents. I don't really know the right word. Independent. I come from a broken home. Um, my mum, I don't think that she would, 
she would scathe me to say it now was was probably on the lower class end of the scale my dad was certainly toward the middle of the class set of scale so me and my dad have never done the i love you or hugs or anything like that we've never had that kind of relationship um and that's you know that hasn't really affected me in any any other way mum was pretty much the opposite um if she goes to the co-op i get oh i love you i'll see you soon i get all that and i'm just like just go to the <laughs> a shot get what you want come home um but yeah i it's just that's just the way it's it's kind of always been i i could probably count on um one hand the amount of physical contact i think i've had with my dad um in the last or oh, my 27 15 years and they're all five of them are handshakes so you know, I, that that just is what it is. He'll give me the old, um, he, you know, he gives me the old slap around the chops if he catches me unawares or whatever, as the old parent and son, dad and son type behavior kind of acts. But as I mean, like proper for proper, proper terms of endearment type um, kind of contact, you know, maybe five times in the past 15 years. Like that. And that's, I've never, I've never known any different as Lee kind of says about bringing up his twins. Um, I never know any different. So that's just kind of how that is. Um, Mum, again, was the opposite. She was very touchy feely, very lovey. Always loved a hug and a, and a kiss and all that stuff. I think that's just mum's, really, isn't it? Generally speaking. Um, I'd say mine's the same as yours, that we're not a physical contact that we family. We generally show our affection through sarcasm. So, yeah. And that, that sometimes oh. spirals itself as well. This explains but, a lot. I think this is this is quite. I think this, this explains is, a lot, actually. This is why Lee about, and I well, get on the, so well. I think we're yeah, quite, this we're explains a lot when I used to come round. Do you want me to come round? Hey guys, come on, bring it in, and you go. Oh no, my god, James! Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Do you remember? He used to make us, oh, used to make us hug. Like, I would yeah, always you try. Like, and now, and now I it's making always, a lot of sense. I would right always try and leave without having to hug Joe, but I could never get away with it. Ever, ever, ever. But I always. I'd always, I'm always <laughs> huggy with my kids, but it's got to the point now where they're at the age where I'll go for a hug and they'll just kind of stand there frozen, like, what are you doing, you strange man? Leave us alone. So is that yeah. like when I come to hug you, Lee, when I come round? Go... Yeah, that's it. So the reaction I get from them is the reaction you get from me. <laughs> yeah. And Ryan, like, oh, come on, guys, let's bring it in there. Oh, no. But then I do it and you go, I can figure out, all right, okay, I'll just back off and. So I think that's also I think that's also the introvert tendencies as well. Mm, like great. it isn't um it just isn't something that I don't often hug any people. Not often yeah. that kind of thing happens. Yeah, um, I, I'm yeah, go on, sorry, what are you saying? Go on, yeah, no, that, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, because my two daughters like Meg's just likes to be hugged when she wants to be hugged. You can't hug her unless she wants to be hugged. And and, and Laura, my other daughter, she does not want to be hugged unless again she says, you know, she you know, it's very, very, don't hug me, like keep away at this point, you know, so, um, but yeah, I've always, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, you know, I am that sort of person, um, but yeah, so yeah, because they're quite introverted, so, um, so I can see that, so yeah, so interesting stuff, I really like that actually perspective from you and uh, Ryan, and, 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 and it shows, go on, oh sorry, go go on. I was going to say, no, no, car key has asked a couple of times on the TikTok, I don't let it go by, because I've, no, go on. Uh, which I think is very topical, and it's what's your opinion on screen time and limiting tech with kids? Um, yeah, and obviously, question. Ryan, you you've got view. Although I don't know, you'd probably been older by the time that became an issue. I don't know, Joe, whether your kids were a bit older by the time that became a thing. Well, it was starting, wasn't it? Remember, I, I think one of the podcasts I said that they had a black. My, uh, my, my eldest had a BlackBerry, wasn't it? it was what was it? MSN? Was it Messenger or something? MSN? And it was the start of the Blackberries, and it was that era and then yeah. you know it, it start, and it was really the start of it was that start of how long you know that wasn't it, it was like oh with the new technology and then people would give it to them and then then you started getting this facebook and then it was like how long do we allow them but it wasn't really a big thing not like it is now it's like even bigger now isn't it um because yeah. i've had more time but i definitely think it's you know it definitely had an effect i'm sure but anyway i'll throw it over to you because you probably you're probably a bit more i, I more would recent. say i'm on the liberal side of the spectrum as yeah, far as me. that goes so i've got say the Twins I reference, they're 12, and then um, he would be in the house as well. Um, current partner, two um, stepchildren, one 17, so, you know, that he's a bit out, you know, that's his time to do. Um, and one's 13, so two 12 and 13 year old. And actually, I'm quite comfortable with them regulating their own time as far as that goes. I don't see it causing any issues. Um, 
we don't really enforce a bedtime or anything like that. Enforce the getting up time, which then kind of then regulates itself into a bedtime. But I like, and it's not just saying social media, everything is giving a bit of space to find, you know, to make the right decision, might nudge in the right direction if needed. So the twins they don't live for me because they were down at, um, for summer. And the same is, is there is like, right, time to go off to bed now, but you can look at your phone or your switch or your tablet or whatever until um, you want to. And actually they... I think because it's not a novelty, they don't sit there till three in the morning on it. They, you know, they know they need to sleep. They know they have to get up the other side of it. And the consequence of staying up really late is they feel knackered when they have to get up. And then they've got the choice to do it a bit earlier. So kind of the the rule, if you like, is more around enforcing the getting up time than the turning off time. And then it kind of puts them in a the position to make that right choice. And I don't know that the decision to do it that way was as conscious a thought of that, but that's thinking out loud, that's kind of how it is. So I and the same during the day, just let them do it. And I find they don't end up doing it all day. And in fact, if it's like, oh, should we play a board game or something, they're normally really up for it. So it's not like you have to prize them away from it because it's not something that's in a set period of time. Yeah. Might be me just being a bit lazy and being let them do what they want. No, but I don't no, think no. there is. I th- I prefer I prefer yeah them making their choices around it and it's the same to me when i was growing up again it was more it wasn't so much smartphones and stuff because i was in my 20s when that came out but i still had games consoles and computer in my room big boxy monitor all that stuff and i was kind of left to my own devices with it which let and i i self-regulated with it and i don't think it ever became a an issue well, it's funny you saying that because when I was playing my computer, it goes back in the days with the ZX Spectrum and a cassette tape. And your Atari 2600 or whatever it was. I don't know if that was out then, but the ZX Spectrum tape. And my mum got so fed up with me being in my room to playing games on this thing, she turned the electricity off and I hadn't saved the game. You had to save it on a cassette tape. And I was gutted because I'd been playing for hours and I lost my save game. Oh, no. So that's how my enforcement, but I've never done that with my girls. So I've almost let them... Like you, a bit like oh, you. That's good. About, I'm the same bit. We kind of yeah, I, I, I was with that. So, because I think if you sort of, well, I don't know. It's, just, it's my experience. Like if you if you make it like the forbidden fruit, then you want the forbidden fruit, and that's been my. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying that's it. And like to self regulate, I think is better. But yeah. again, there's always that thing about safety online and all that sort of stuff because it built up at that point. But I was very much on your corner, Lee. So it looks like we're quite similar in that regard. I think so. Yeah, it's a good point. Good shout that one. Um, on technology um yeah um but what i was going to also say just to sort of change change gears a little bit i don't know how much time i've got but you know i would say what what would you i mean you just say about the hardest moment what what's been your hardest moment i think from you ryan you know as a as a person growing up you know because you, you said you you said you know your family was it was difficult for you right because your dad wasn't with you and your mum and lee from a parent perspective what's been your hardest moment do you think me yeah um just to circle back a little bit as well i grew up at the prime social media time like when i was 11 bebo was a thing after myspace and then oh yeah and then it was i was prime msn and live messenger and things like that and bbm through the blackberries and things like that That was prime that's it um but when i remember i must have been eight or nine it must have been christmas or my birthday but i got um they'd released the slim playstation twos remember the old they used to have the old fat ones and they released yeah. the slim ones yeah I got one of those for my birthday or for christmas and um my mum um and stepdad were kind of really anti-gaming and things like that i wasn't allowed to play grand theft auto which is, it was an 18 so you couldn't really argue with it right so it kind of makes sense but everybody else was doing it so that kind of made it quite difficult and um I remember I was allowed an hour a day and it must have been Boxing Day or the day after Boxing Day. It must have been Christmas. And um, I was watching The Simpsons on a DVD on the PlayStation because it was a DVD player at the same time. Mm, yeah. Multifunctional. You know, the world's, world was a different time in like 2003 or whenever it was. And um, I was watching The Simpsons and I remember I remember getting the biggest telling off for being on the PlayStation. And I was like, well, I'm not on it. I'm literally using it to DVD player. And they didn't understand the difference. They had no idea. And I remember getting grounded and have it taken away and things like that. And um, I really struggled. I really struggled with growing up and technology and things like that just because they didn't understand it. 
And so that meant that I would break the rules to be able to use it when I wanted to and do what I wanted to do, which then often led to me getting told off even more and getting it taken away even more and things like that. So it was a bit of a vicious circle. Did I do, you know, I didn't do, I didn't, I didn't play any like games that were outside of my age limit or anything like that, but it was just kind of more use time. Um, they only wanted me on it an hour a day. Um, I obviously being between the ages of eight and 17, because that's when it was really big for me. And it still kind of is pretty big now, but you know what I mean? Um, wanted to be on it 23 hours a day rather than one. So that was a really hard balance to kind of make sure that I wasn't getting caught playing, but also, um, enjoying that time as well so, so thinking about that thinking about that if you now have what, is, what would be your view now if you had kids what would you what would you do do you do anything I think, I, would, I think i would embrace their interests similar mm. take a take us take us a, a leaf out of lee's book and once they reach a certain age because i'm not sure at six seven eight years old you could let somebody regulate their own bedtime but i think i think lee as a parent with his partner as a parent um can assess a situation on its own merits they're both intelligent people i'm sure all three of the children involved are intelligent people. So they know they know what their limits are. And as Lee says, he doesn't impose a bedtime, but he imposes a wake up time. And that in itself imposes a bedtime. Um someone's important. And yeah. um uh so I think for me it would, you know, up until a certain age, whilst I wouldn't want them on it all day, every day, I think I think you just regulate it as best that you can as a, as a parent in that, in that time, right? It doesn't have, you don't, it doesn't have to be specifically 60 minutes. It doesn't have to be 360 minutes. It could just be dad, while she's cooking dinner, do you mind if I go on my PlayStation for a bit or whatever they want to do? Yes, sure. But it's the same with TV, right? I'm sure TV, I'll say back in your day, Joe, not, not disrespectfully, but you know, similarly in that kind of tone, I bet television was similar around your time. Well, tell you what, when I was watching the TV, my mum and dad was really strange. They didn't impose anything on TV. I stayed up late watching TV. Oh, okay. But as soon as the Spectrum came along and I, I was involved in gaming, yeah, that was the problem. that's when it changed. I don't understand because I suppose they watch TV. The media. It was almost like a family get-together thing. As soon as you start taking yourself off to your own, you're almost like, because I'd be shutting myself in my room, right? So it'd be yeah. like quite a solo enterprise. And then I thought, what? Well, you know, probably thinking, well, it's in that room. In that room. Like, literally, I'll wake up, switch it on, be on it all day. Like come down for a bit of dinner, go back upstairs. So I think yeah. it was that whole thing. I think that's probably what it drove that piece. I, I think, think I think anyone, even if if you're especially if you're a boy that's mm. my age, definitely spent a good chunk of their teenage years um doing exactly what you've just said. Getting in from school, probably playing Call yeah. of Duty for four hours, having some dinner, playing Call of Duty for another four hours, going to bed at eleven o'clock, getting up and then repeating the process five times a week. Um yeah, with we're, school. We're my mates. We remember my mates like Look, coming on yeah. 64 is that spectrum just, all that sort of stuff and we do we just like go around and play games and like i loved because, it i loved it i loved it yeah but just because that wasn't the childhood my parents had that was a problem that 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 was a problem because as well it's it comes back down to this whole generation is 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 stuffed a lot of a lot of people say that these days this whole generation is is broken and, and it doesn't work and and uh, it that is, is part of the same epidemic as as this in the sense that you know, when I was your age, I was out kicking a football with my mates around until 10 o'clock at night. And what kind of dangers would you be putting your kids in, then, Lee, in your example, if you sent your 12 and 13 year olds down a park till 10, 11 o'clock at night every night in these days? You know, it's a different world. It's a different um, danger, isn't it? But now, even, though, be, yeah. But, but, even, but it will be different again if mm. I have kids in five, 10 years' time. In a further 10 years' time, when they would be 10, which is 20 years from now, technology could be completely different. Oh yeah, there's going to be virtual reality and all sorts. It's Elon going to be Musk's augmented chips reality. will be in your, in your brains. You won't have to go to school or anything. It'll just yeah, be zapped onto you, right? Planted. So flying cars will exist, and <laughs> and I think I think it's a fear of the un as for parents. I think it's a fear of the unknown and not wanting to disrupt your kids' development into life. I understand it looking back, but at the time, oh, were they dicks? I just wanted <laughs> to do what I wanted to do. Um, I think you're right, though. But in answer to your, from, yeah, sorry, I'm going to say in answer to your later question because I diverted around a bit. Um, in terms of what my toughest part was, I think it's it's growing up with a man in the house that isn't my dad, hmm. and it's and and similarly for for the for the kids that Lee lives with now, not well actually dissimilarly. I it happened to me when I was four or five years old, so. 
it it I've gotten over it quicker, but you just live live Lee lives life in his own house differently to how his neighbor will, to how their neighbor will, to how their neighbor will. And it just that adjustment period, especially you know, of the imposing age that maybe they are now makes it tough to accept someone new in, in your home. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying that Lee's probably doing a bad job or anything like that, but it is a, it's an example. I'm of awesome. Where that's the, that's that, the, exactly. the crux of this situation is I'm awesome. Exactly that. <laughs> but when I was four or five years old, that was okay. But then when we started to bang heads when I was that teenager, um, their personality type conflicts heavily with mine and it did often come to blows is the wrong phrase but it did escalate quite heavily and it would cause quite heated arguments and um the way that that they parent is is in no way the way that i would ever want to be parented or i would ever want to parent so that just makes it a challenge it made it a challenge growing up and i and I think that contributed to me being as introverted as I am. And I don't have a problem with that, but you, you forget how much moments in life can have an impact on your life later in that life as well. So it, it, you know, it was, that was probably the toughest part for me, that adjustment period, but it yeah. was, that's because it was over a, a 10, 12 year period rather than, you know, in, in on the other side, Lee, Lee's people that, that live with Lee are probably a bit luckier because by the age of 13 been. and that by the age of 13 they've already <laughs> developed strong personality types and they've already developed naturally into the people that they're likely to turn into anyway so lee's impact will whilst positive will also be probably be um less impactful than perhaps what it would have been if it was 10 years ago rather than now not that that's a yes, bad so. thing or a good thing you know it just yeah, differs to just... you know it just it is what it is it's a matter of consequence yeah. isn't it yeah, it depends on the person, doesn't it? I think as well, you know, it depends on the person. And because uh, I know I started really coming, in, like, personality wise, me and my dad would clash when I was in my 17, 18, like, because you're starting to get that independence and we'd have a little bit, not too bad, it's not too bad, but, but we would clash a little bit more because I wouldn't do my certain thing. My dad wanted me to do this certain thing, but I wouldn't do like a certain thing. We'd, we'd have a few stand up arguments. I wanted to give up football and want me to continue football and I, like actually playing. And I didn't, I wanted to play computer games rather than play football. And there's a bit of a conflict because I wanted to play computer games and my dad wanted to play football. I love football, but I, at that stage, I started to prefer to play computer games than play football. Um, and that was the difference. My dad would love football, absolutely loved it. And he was brilliant, you know, and I, I still love football, but not as much as my dad would in the day. So, but yeah, and so Ryan, it's a really, thank you also for being really honest about how that, you know, how that, that affected you because that's really challenging. Um, so that's been useful for people, but I know we're coming near the end now, I think. And I want to ask another question about really, I don't think we finished on the subject, but actually, I think an inspiration bit, you know, what, what are we going to do to inspire our children? Now, I always encourage my, my girls to go for their dreams. Whereas like when I was growing up, it was no, there's no aspiration. It was like, just get, go, go out to go, get, go, leave school, go get a job and just pay your bills. It was almost like that type of mentality was, I would encourage that go for your dreams type mentality. I don't know whether that's right or wrong. That's just the way I'm looking at it. I don't want to sort of let them to look back with regret. So I encourage that whole piece around that as well. So I just want to get that in because that's that inspirational piece for me because that's really what I want them to live their best lives and not feel that they've just got to go out and get a job. Because actually, I think my youngest would hate working for a corporation. And my, and my eldest would, I wouldn't mind, but she needs to choose. She's going to be choosing her, you know, her for a proper subject. She's really chasing down her dream, which is great. But there you go. That's my two pennies worth there. There you go. I want to chase down dreams. We're pushing on time. Thank you guys for sharing on this. It's been this has been a great topic. Ryan, for not having much to say, you had a lot to say, which was very yeah. good, all really valuable as well. Also, guys, thank you for uh glossing over my alarm going off, which was my reminder to put the garlic bread in the oven <laughs> in the ah, background, which I got away with. That's why you got off that's why you went off screen, wasn't it? You that's went off it. to put the garlic bread in the oven. <laughs> what are you having the garlic bread with? Uh, did pasta bake nice and easy to do while I podcast, but oh. doing my parenting duties and making sure everyone gets their dinner on time. As hey, well. I remember the uh, garlic bread days. We used to come around yours, Lee. With some with some frozen pizza. Those were yeah. the days. Joe. Didn't Those you bring a vegetarian days. one once? Yeah, Joe did that quite. I a always bought the vegetarian. Oh, never forgive him for it. Never remember? Forgive come it. on, you've, you haven't got that. You've forgotten. Really, I never want to do a podcast with you two in the same room ever again <laughs> we've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to relive the old day at some point. We'll have to do it just once. No just vegetarian pizzas. Yeah, <laughs> I look forward to my pasta bake coming through the door. 
Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll stick it in a little box and I'll post it off to you now. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everyone out there for listening. Again, social media at Listen to I N, Listen T O I N, help get to that next milestone of 4,000. And of course, Joe on TikTok, J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation, helping him get to that massive 10K goal. Loads of people on there interacting today. Thank you, all of you. Try to get to as many comments as we can. There's some great stuff on there. People reminiscing about computer games back in the day and everything. See that coming through. We appreciate you all. Um, being with us for part of all of the podcast recording again every tuesday you can catch us live before the co- the podcast podcast all about fishing drops at the end of the week <laughs> and of course check us out inspirationnation.org.uk for everything to do with the podcast as well right i think with mere minutes to go oh joe just, he's got something to say just to let he's you know just in. again I just want to re-emphasize, I think it's really good that um, our TikTok audience actually choose some of the content. So 100%. I'd encourage you to like, like message us, you know, if I'm doing a live, just say, what would you want to talk about? And I will bring it to the table. You can always message Lee or whatever. Go on. If you sign up to a newsletter, you can message us direct there or Twitter, message Lee direct on there. Any social media, just tell us what you want us to talk about. And Clarky's just said this is a great episode, just to let you know, Clarky official. And there are a few people as well, if they are listening. It's been a um, massive influx on Twitter the last week. I've got a few messages of people. There are a few topic suggestions in there. So I will get back to all of you. It's just as I've got off my Skyview holiday and back to work, I just need to jump on top of it. So I will be going back to people this week and do, do message us because we do really appreciate it. Um, and Joe, I just want to say, along with this, the interaction from people here, seeing your stuff on social media, the whole message of creating a safe space on social media. I love it, Joe. Keep the campaign going because I think it is working. The positive space. When a positive space, we can just share That's their challenges, you know, share the, the struggling with, but also celebrate wins because we don't celebrate enough. I don't think we all give ourselves credit. So that's what it is. Hopefully. And all that's left for me to say is three to one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out i really really appreciate it and lastly don't forget out to check the newsletter the link is in the description below that's where i can talk directly to you without through the youtube throughout the social because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with inspiration nation ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next so i'd love to see you in the next video so please click on those links please follow through please Let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.